can feel my body fold against the concrete but i can't seem to get enough my mind is fixed on what it wants i just let you beat me look at me deceiving let you get the best of me in bed with my worst enemy this is a no go i just can take hold Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. Also, if you are new, welcome. We have two days of some super motivating stuff going on here. You guys know I have been working on decluttering. This is the time of year that I feel like is the best time to start decluttering because Christmas is just around the corner. So trying to get all the old out so that the new stuff isn't so overwhelming. Um, so you guys saw in the last couple of videos I was working on the kitchen and today we are going to be working on the boys bedroom. So I knew they had clothes that weren't fitting them anymore. So going through all of that as well as their toys and just everything in the boys room. I am starting out though in Athena's room. Her room is still a catch all guys. I'm trying but it's so easy just to throw stuff in here especially since I've been trying to have her take like a nap in here or something like that but she sleeps so much better in her room that I think it's because it's quieter and a little bit out of the way so we've been struggling here I'm trying to organize all of my freeze-dried breast milk that I have just on this shelf I do plan on getting like some bins to put it in that way it can be in here, but out of sight, out of mind. Well, not out of mind, but out of sight situation. But yeah, going to be getting all of this done and then moving into the boys' room. I wanted to start their room. That way, when they got home from school, they could help me out. Plus, on this day, I had a doctor's appointment for Freya, so I only had a certain amount of time. Um, Freya got a really bad ear infection, and actually, it was this morning um, of me filming this video that when she came out of her room, I noticed there was, like, dry blood all around her ear, and right away, I'm like, okay, calling the doctor because I knew right then that it was most likely a busted eardrum from a really bad infection, and luckily, we were able to get her into her doctor right away that day and we didn't have to go to like urgent care. So pretty much all I wanted to do before the boys got home was pull everything out and clean their closet. So I was putting all their clothes on their beds um, so Bjorn's on Bjorn's bed, Xander's on Xander's bed, and making piles of the toys. I did like pull out any dirty laundry. If I didn't know it was dirty or not, I put it in the dirty laundry because some of this stuff I'm like, okay, if it's like mixed in with clean and dirty, I'm just assuming it's dirty. But I figured this is often the stuff that like overwhelms the kids. And I knew I could quickly go through this and do this portion. That way when they get, got home, it was just a yes, no, yes, no, put it back in, good to go. Um, I actually didn't even go through it with Xander because I had to leave for a doctor's appointment at that time. Um, and he was able to get it all done while Frey and I were gone. So it worked out perfectly. Now I have been decluttering with my kids since they were itty bitty, like pretty much at about three years old, I start decluttering decluttering with my kids. I feel like it's a really good habit to teach them. Um, and then it's less overwhelming as they get older. So this is really easy for my kids just because it's a normal habit. They know about twice a year we go through everything. And I never say they have to get rid of stuff. It's more of a just making that habit of, okay, do you still like this? Do you still play with this? Does this fit? Doesn't it fit? Is it even your style? Because I know for the longest time, my hardest part with like decluttering clothes is, well, it fits me and someone got it for me, so I can't get rid of it. Um, and I don't want the boys to feel that way, especially like Xander getting older. He has changed so much in just the last six months personality-wise, likes and dislike-wise. I don't 
didn't want him to feel like, oh, I have to keep this because you got it for me, but I don't really like it anymore. It's too little kiddish and my style has changed. So giving them that okay of, okay, does it fit? And do you like it? If you don't like it, don't feel bad about saying, I'm not going to wear this because I would rather you have the space and the like peace of mind of being able to find the things you like because you don't have all the clutter than keeping something just because you think it'll make someone feel bad that you got rid of it. Otherwise, how are your guys' week going? We are finally almost to the weekend. We have one more week of school before Christmas break, and everyone in the house is super excited. The kids have like two weeks, two full weeks off, um, so they are like really excited about Christmas break coming up. So we just got to get through one more school week. Hopefully, all of us that have been getting sick in the house are better by then. Um, Freya started it out with like an ear infection. She, she wasn't like sick sick, but I just wonder if it's kind of the same bug because she got that. And then Bjorn had like a little 12 hour bug, super minor. Uh, Xander actually had the exact same like 12 hour bug the other day. And it really stunk because he got sick at school on Wednesday and had to be sent home, and Wednesday night was supposed to be his Christmas concert, and he couldn't go. We were all very bummed. Uh, I'm actually hoping Xander remembers. I asked him if he could bring his instrument home tonight because I really wanted to hear him play his instrument. We rent one of the school instruments, and it's a very large instrument, so he leaves it at school and only practices at school, which is fine. I told him if that's the way you want to do it, I have no problem with that. But with missing the concert on Wednesday, I'm like, can you please bring it home for the weekend so dad and I can hear you play? Because I was so bummed out. I know he was bummed. They've been working really hard on this concert. Uh, and I think the next performance isn't till spring. So hopefully nothing comes up then. But big thing is I'm hoping that no one is sick come next week with winter vacation. All right. So going through the toys here, I always just with the boys because Bjorn gets home before Xander about two hours before Xander from school. So I told him, I'm like, let's go through it. Now I knew Bjorn plays with a lot more of these toys than Xander does. Just the three year age gap. Z Bjorn is more or still into more toys than Xander is. So I told him, I'm like, we'll go through this. You tell me everything that's a no. There was a couple of times he's like, oh, Xander might want this. I'm like, but do you want it? Cause my whole thought was I was going to make a donate pile that way, when Xander got home, all he had to do was look at the stuff that we said donate. He didn't have to look at, in, well, and his clothes. But otherwise, everything else was a yes from Bjorn already. And then anything that Xander was like, nope, he said donate this, but I still really want it. He was allowed to take out of that donations pile. So that is how we went about it. And it made it a really quick and easy. I love doing this though because one, the kids keep their room so much cleaner when they're not just overburdened by so much stuff. But two, I also noticed that the kids play so much better when they're not overburdened by stuff. When they can actually like see and find the things that they actually like, they have so much more fun and so much more like creative, imaginary playtime than when it is just a cluttered mess. I'm sick of lying here all alone and nearly sleep aside night. I'm on nest. It's boring one million thousand demons around in me. You pick enough fight, it's toxic. You were the best I ever had. But every second you was screwing me over and now I'm done with it. I guess that there was no surprise. Deleting you out of my mind. Like 
The other great thing about going through these clothes is both the boys were telling me they didn't have any pants that fit them. Well, we found out that both boys had pants that fit them. They just couldn't find the ones that fit them. So it was really nice to get rid of the stuff they did not fit on and find jeans and um, sweatpants and stuff that fit them really well and they didn't need to like go shopping. I don't keep like a ton of pants per kid. One, they don't wear a lot of pants. They both prefer to wear shorts, but we have been having some colder days and I'm like, okay, you really should wear pants to school when we're leaving the house and it's like 50 degrees outside. Um, so I try not to overbuy on pants, but also uh, they grow out of them so quickly to buy like a whole wardrobe worth of pants at this age just doesn't make any sense. So I always figure a good three pairs of nice jeans and we wash and repeat and it works out awesome. Here I had a stain on their rug. Bjorn had spilled some sort of drink. So I wanted to go with a spot cleaner, let this sit for a while before coming in with the carpet shampooer. And then I was just kind of going around to any areas of their carpet that just looked like it was a little bit more stained. Half the stuff on this floor, I don't know what it is. <laughs> I'm, I'm just being honest with you. It's a kid's room. <laughs> now, I realize not every kid's room um, is a disaster. There are some kids that are like really tedious about keeping their rooms clean. But I do feel like this is fairly common that you're going to find stains and random messes in your kid's room. I don't think I'm the only one that has this. <laughs> So going in with that, I was not able to completely get this pink stain out of the rug, but that is also why I try not to spend too much money on rugs. I know as a family of six with little kids, animals, all of that, rugs are going to be one of those things that I like to replace on a regular basis because they get worn, they get stained. So I would rather spend less money and replace them more often than spend a lot of money and feel like super guilty that I can't get it like cleaned exactly the way I want it to. All right, and then for the more stubborn areas, I went in with a, another stain remover because uh, I had used the last of the other stuff. Um, and I then also used my scrub brush to really scrub it and let it sit again. Some of these spots were just way more stubborn than others. And this definitely helped a ton. This rug is a washable rug, but I find that it is so large that really to like put it in a washing machine, it would have to go to like a laundromat. Um, but it does wash up pretty easy, which is another reason why I really like them. Plus, once again, it was affordable. And to me, that is very important, especially in kids' rooms. Eventually, I will end up replacing this rug with a new one, and it won't have any of these stains on here. But for now, it's perfectly fine, and I'm just trying to get it to the best of my ability. Uh, back to progress over perfection, because if I focused on getting this rug perfect, I wouldn't have gotten anything else done on this day. I also was really wishing I had my Folex on this day. I love the Folex stain remover and I normally have a couple bottles on hand so I don't run out and I obviously did not realize that it was completely gone and I didn't restock it. So that it was a big bummer. If you guys have never tried Folex, I highly, 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 highly recommend it. 
I have not found a stain remover better than Folex. Like the stuff I used today was fine. Um, but I definitely think this rug would have gotten a lot cleaner if I was able to go in with the Folex. And really just look how dirty this water was from their bedroom. I did end up going over it again just with just water, no like cleaning solution or anything. I like to do that because it just rinses the rug um, of any materials, but I don't normally show that step. I know I've mentioned it a few times, uh, but Shampooing a carpet or rugs or anything is a long process to do it. So normally I only get, show you guys like the first go around. So everything I'm showing you was with soap and water and everything. And then I, like I said, I then go in with just water to rinse and thoroughly, thoroughly dry. I know I always have people asking about how long it takes to dry. And I feel like that is a very personal question. So if you rush this process and you really saturate the rug, it can take a long, long time to dry. I will put a good amount of moisture in it, but then I also go over it multiple times very slowly in multiple different directions to pull up as much of the moisture as possible. And I find that usually it doesn't take more than an hour to be dry. Um, but I think it really, really depends on just how patient you are with this entire process in making it a lot, lot easier. But honestly, that was it for today. Just the room and Athena's room was enough for me. So this is the next day and I had a lot more on my to-do list to get done. Written down the words to say It is time I've been waiting five days To explain How you make me feel inside Baby Got it all figured out Wanna do this right There's a doubt in my mind Baby, you're the one And tonight I am going all the way mm. So I'm actually really excited. I just got found a, uh, what is it? Well, general practice doctor. Is that right? <laughs> just like an overall doctor. Um, I finally found one down here and I am like in love with her setup. So I was looking for a doctor that was like focused on holistic medicine. Um, and like Eastern and Western medicine, like give me the things that I can do without putting all the chemicals of the like pharmaceutical drugs. <laughs> give me the other options first, but also have the ability to give me the pharmaceutical drugs if necessary, because I definitely have no issue with just the regular doctor stuff when they are needed, but I am all about trying to heal it a more natural way as possible just because I feel like it's better for our bodies. Growing up, I had a really bad seizure disorder. I know I've talked about that before. With that, I was on so much medication when I was younger, Tegretol, Propanolol, and a dozen other ones trying to help me with my seizures that honestly, it put a really bad like taste in my mouth because I got firsthand that feeling or yeah, that like feeling of all the bad that the drugs can do to you because they all have side effects and everything. And obviously back then I needed them. Um, but then when my mom was able to figure out that putting me on a low carb diet helped with my seizures and I was able to wean off of the medication and how much better I felt, it's just always been in my head like, okay, if I need them, I need them. But is there an option 
a more holistic option when it comes to stuff. Um, so all that being said, I found a doctor. That's exactly what she does. She is all about like, like first thing, when I did my first doctor appointment with her, um, she's like, well, for your allergies, you can take a daily Zyrtec or Claritin or oil of oregano. Um, and that right there, I was like, okay, oil of oregano. That is something that I can take that's not like right away to a pharmaceutical drug and stuff. But the other thing I really, really liked is I am going to be getting my blood drawn to do a hormone panel and check like my estrogen, testosterone, all of those. I don't know. She wrote the script. All of those things. <laughs> and I feel like that is not very common to get like a full blood panel to check your hormones. I'm super excited. The hard thing is, though, at least what I was having and why I hadn't found a doctor for so long is finding a doctor that is accepted by your insurance. So that was the tricky part. But she takes TRICARE and I'm just like super stoked about that whole thing. Um, you can see in the family room, I was just tidying up. The family room is always messy. The kids play in here. It's funny because we went through a phase with like the boys where they had gotten older. So like the everyday clutter of like toys and playthings wasn't a thing for a good couple of years. And now we've hit that point again now with Freya where there's always little things out. She is obsessed with anything artsy. Like she loves playing with Play-Doh and kinetic sand and drawing and all of those things. Um, and I don't put that stuff away every second of the day. I will normally clean it up like once a day. Either I do it like right away in the morning um, and she can bring it out. It doesn't matter, but I'll do it like right away in the morning or I do it before bed, but I only clean it up once a day because for me, it doesn't make sense to constantly be cleaning it up for her to bring it back out. Like I don't want her to feel like she can't play because mom's constantly cleaning up her stuff. So for my mental health, I clean it up once a day just to get the whole, I like that feeling of the whole house getting back to a reset point. I know a lot of people always are like, oh, I feel like cleaning makes no sense because I clean and it's just a mess right away. And I got over that because it is really easy to feel that way, especially like with laundry and dishes and toys. Like you clean it up and it's a mess right away again. Also, if you have not cleaned out the filter in your washing machine, yeah, dishwasher lately, here's your sign. Clean it out, pull it out, give it a good rinse and scrub. Mine was definitely in desperate need. Um, but okay, so how I got over that whole feeling of I don't want to clean because it's just going to be dirty in about 2.5 seconds is I realized when my house was messy, the mess collected more mess. So by doing a quick reset, it kept it always easy to do these quick tidy ups. So even though it feels like I'm cleaning all the time, the cleaning that I'm doing is so much easier than if I would just be like, oh, it's just going to get messy. So I'm not going to touch it. And then did like a once a week reset. That would that once a week would be so much harder and so much more work than just a quick tidy every single day. That that is where I like told my brain, okay, we can't think of it as I don't want to clean this up because it's she's just gonna pull it out again and it's gonna be a mess again. I need to clean this up because if I don't, she may pull out five other toys also. And now I don't have just these couple things to clean up. I have all of this to clean up. Um, so if you are in that position, I hope that helps because it definitely is a situation where it can be really easy to feel like you're just doing the same five things every single day. Because realistically, as moms, we often are just doing the same five things every single day. But don't make it don't make that let you feel like any ne less necessary. These things are the things that bring joy to your family and yourself. I think a lot of times we can feel like 
kind of slighted because people don't realize how important the job of a homemaker is, but a clean and organized home truly does keep the people living in that home happier and healthier, even if they don't realize it. The natural stress hormones that come from mess and clutter can be a lot. So for me, having a clean home is a like form of self-care because I know mentally I feel so much better in a clean home and in return, physically, I also feel a lot better. So if you were here with us on Tuesday, if you're new here, I post every Tuesday and Friday. So if you haven't subscribed yet, you definitely should and join us. Um, but on Tuesday's video, I asked you guys if you were done Christmas shopping yet. We are other than like two gift cards I have to buy, but I don't count that as Christmas shopping because it's just gift cards. <laughs> but we are pretty much done. Now, my next question is, have you started wrapping Christmas presents yet? I am the type that often will not wrap Christmas presents till like the week of Christmas. And Bobby and I will pick one night. We will lock our door and lock and wrap every single gift we have, which is actually a real lot because since moving to Florida, uh, not only do we have the gifts that we buy, uh, but we also get gifts sent to the kids from their aunts and uncles and grandparents in Wisconsin that sometimes they're wrapped and sometimes they're not. It kind of depends if Amazon offers the gift option, if they're wrapped or not. Um, so it is like a lot of gifts, but I do it all in one sitting, which I always kick myself for. <laughs> because man, does my back hurt the next day bending over, wrapping all those gifts, usually on my bed just a couple nights before Christmas. So let me know, are you a super procrastinator like I am? Because I know it is just procrastinating. Um, but it's just the way I do it. I always procrastinate. Um, or have you, uh, like, are you done wrapping or do you wrap as you go? Like, you know, there's still stuff coming in. Once you get it, you wrap it. Let me know how you do it. Just because I always find it interesting how different each person does it. Also, do you put gifts under your tree before Christmas? I heard that was a big difference in different families as well. So I personally do not put gifts under the tree until Christmas Eve. So everything gets put under the tree once the kids are in bed Christmas Eve so that, that when they wake up Christmas morning, all those gifts are there. My parents always did it that way. And I just remember like how exciting it was. Uh, so that is how we do it. I'm just curious. Do you guys have gifts under your tree currently or does everything go under there Christmas Eve? So I feel like often stainless is super overwhelming to people. I always get comments about how to keep it streak free and everything. So a couple things. I do not use stainless steel cleaner on my appliances every day. Normal day-to-day -day cleaning, I just use a multi-purpose cleaner. Use what you love. I have a couple that I really, really like. Uh, I don't think there's a huge difference between multi-purpose cleaners. My personal favorites are Pine Salt and Thieves Cleaner. Those are my go-to. Um, but then when I use a stainless steel cleaner, I spray it on the, the 
I'm losing my train of thought. I spray it on the microfiber rag and then wipe the appliance. I find that if you spray it on the fridge, there's often too much product and that's when it gets streaky. Also, how do you love Bailey? He loves that couch. Absolutely loves it. <laughs> He's so cute. Um, but that is the best way to keep it not streaky. Oh, for all of you that always wonder why this is called the dog's room and why this is Bailey's couch, this is why. He's just like, mom, don't bother me. I'm going to put my arm over my ear so I don't have to hear you working. <laughs> but I wanted to turn on the vacuum. So the vacuum in the main living area as well as in the dog room to do a quick cleanup. And then Freya and I were going to work on her room. Her room honestly was not that bad. Um, so it didn't take too long. Just a quick tidy up of all of her toys. She usually will do this on her own, except that I knew she had like clothes in here that had to get hung up. She can't do those. Um, it's just too high for her and too difficult for her. And it was just easier for me to come in and help her with all of the just like random stuff that she couldn't do. She's really good though. Usually every morning I'll just ask her and be like, hey, did you tidy up your room? And she'll go in and tidy it up. And then I do like to come in here every couple of weeks and give it like the good mommy clean and every couple of months and give it a really good organization. But I honestly, when it comes to organization kid stuff, I don't stress too much because most likely they're not going to keep it organized the way that I do for a very long time. So Every three to six months, come in and give it a good organization. Mainly when I notice that she's getting like frustrated because she can't find a specific toy, that is when I know, okay, I'm going to come in here. We're going to declutter the things you're not playing with because her being so young, like her wants and needs change day to day, um, but also just a really good organize and it makes it so much better. Once again, she can play and everything so much better in a room that's less chaotic. So we try to keep it as calm and chill as possible. change my mind and your head strong forward but this time around i'm taking my time don't push me i'm not coming down i'm not giving up oh don't rush me i made up my mind don't... now my closet is another one on the to-do list however that probably won't happen till the new year because we hide things in here. <laughs> so organizing it out right now, honestly, would just feel kind of diff. I don't want to say useless, but it's difficult because I'd organize it and then throw a bunch of stuff in there that would make it look not organized right away because of all the extra just like Amazon deliveries and gifts and everything we have hidden in our closet. But I do need to get that done as well. Bobby did go through all of his clothes actually the same day that we went through the boys' clothes. So he was able to go through all of his stuff. And I could do my clothes also, but I like to do it just like all at once. Go through the clothes. I'm personally someone that I like the big before and afters when I'm doing a project. So if I'm going to do it, I want to do it all or as much as possible. Um, but that will come in the New Year's. Once the Christmas decor is down, all the hidden gifts aren't in my closet anymore. All of that will make a big difference.
All right, so I need your opinion. I know I just paint, did this like little uh, accent on the lower half of the room with these panelings um, recently, but I am thinking, and I want your opinions, uh, that when we redo our floors, because they need to get done, I've mentioned that in a couple of videos, that the floors in our bedroom are original from when we moved in, and I would like to replace them with the same flooring that's throughout the rest of the house because these are just getting like bowed and they're lifting and some are broken and all the things. But I'm thinking that I want to paint those panels I put up a darker color. And I'm thinking like army green. Let me know your opinions in the comments below. Um, I haven't decided yet and I have time because I don't know when this project is going to happen. But I want some war more warmth in this room and more color. But I don't want like, I want a dark neutral. Um, nothing too crazy. So let me know what you guys are thinking. I was thinking blue there for a while, but I don't know. I feel like I could get sick of the blue where... I've really been loving like the colors of our rug, which are those browns and greens and like very earthy tones. So yeah, that is my current dilemma thinking of what I might want to do. I would leave the top nice and light still. Just that lower two thirds, possibly like an army green, like deep, dark army green. Run with you And from what I have heard You do the same thing too I wanna stay forever We could be good together Guess misery loves company Better to late than never You know we could do better So take a chance and run with me And then for a quick cleanup, I'm bringing in my Eureka wet dry vacuum just to do the floors in our bedroom and bathroom. Now, another thing you guys don't always see, I showed you on like day one how I turned on the robot vacuums to just get the rest of the house cleaned up while I was working in other areas. Here, I like to send in the robot vacuum like if I need to walk away to feed the baby, pump, whatever, I'll send the robot vacuum in here and then I come in with this Eureka. I like doing that to get that like initial layer of dirt and everything off the floor. Plus, I like that it goes under my bed and cleans under my bed and gets all those hair and dust bunnies under there. Um, but coming in with this is really nice just to do maintenance cleaning and everything and help with all the like sand buildup. Because we live as close as we do to the water, there is always sand coming in our house and our bedroom is one of the worst areas because of the door that goes right out to the backyard. Let me show you how it feels to roll the dice. You know you want it. Just say the word. Everywhere we go will turn to paradise. All I know is that I need you in my life. Let me show you how And then for the rest of the house, I wanted to bring out my Oceder Spin Mop and give it a really good cleaning. Um, I always say there's really no substitute for certain cleaning tasks. So the wet dry vacuums are amazing, but they do not replace a mop and bucket. Um, just there's going to be certain corners. They just can't get as well. You're not getting that same scrubbing power as with a like handheld mop in the same exact way that a mop and bucket will never replace cleaning your floors on your hands and knees. So not saying that some things aren't, um, that they're like just not as good. 
it's just completely different. Like, there's a lot of people that are like, yeah, I'm never going to clean my floors on my hands and knees. Like, a mop is suffice. And that is totally okay. Like, doing something is better than not doing anything. And same with the wet dry vacuums. They work so well. And if that is all you do, you're still making progress and it's better than nothing at all. Uh, But I do like to come in with a traditional mop and bucket. Nowadays, I only do it about once. Mm, Yeah, probably about once a week is what I do it. I used to, especially in Wisconsin. So if you have been here since we lived in Wisconsin, we currently live in Florida. If you are new here, um, our floors back in Wisconsin were a dark wood floor and they were beautiful when they were clean, but oh my goodness, those things, you could look at them wrong and they'd be dirty. And especially in the winter because of all the salt from the roads and everything from the snow and whatnot, those floors, I literally mopped every single day. And that was before like wet dry vacuums were popular. Uh, I so wish I had a wet dry vacuum back in that old house because it would have made my life so much easier. Actually, the reason we picked the floors that we did in this house was specifically because of the color of those floors. I brought home the three flooring that I liked the most. I got just like three planks of each one. I put them on the floor and I let them sit there for two weeks on the floor. That way we could see what showed footprints the most, what shows dirt the most. Like in two weeks, which floor looked the cleanest? That is how I picked these floors. Of Two weeks of these floors being on... Um, the samples being on the ground, this color was the one that showed the least in our house. That's why I always tell people when they are looking for floors to get the samples and bring them home and live on those samples because your dirt and stuff in your house is not going to be the same as my house. So seeing what floors work best for your mess, I highly, highly recommend it. I'm not saying that I wanted to like be able to live in filth and not see the filth, but I have animals. I have kids. Like my floors are never going to be spotless. It is impossible. I clean these floors. Two seconds later, the dogs are going to go outside, use the bathroom, come back in. The kids are going to get home from school and track stuff throughout the house. Like that's just normal life. And I'm totally okay with that. But I am the type of person that I like having everything in a certain way and looking a certain way. Uh, So having floors that I knew disguised more dirt and stuff was what I was going for. So yes, if you are looking to get new floors, pick out like three of your favorites, get three or four planks of each one of those, bring them home, put them on the floor and live with those floors for like two weeks. Don't clean them, live with them. And then when those two weeks are done, the cleanest floor, that's your winner. Well, like always, a huge thank you guys for sticking with me on today's video. Now, this is my favorite part of every video this holiday season is sharing all of your guys's Christmas photos. If you still want to send them in, you can send them to my Instagram. I do have that linked in the description. I love seeing everyone's decorations. And I have to say, I have a special place in my heart for everyone that's sharing their Christmas animal photos. Absolutely adorable. You guys can keep sending me your Uh, pictures of your animals with the Christmas decorations. Absolutely loving that. But make sure you like, comment, and subscribe if you are new here. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.
Rejoice.